Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, if you allow us to just wait for a few minutes uh, to allow other attendees to uh, join the webinar. Thank you very much. Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. This is Sheikha El Marzouki, Procurement Professional at the Telecommunications and Digital Government Regularity Authority in the UAE and the co-chair of SIPS Youth Committee. Passionate, always planning to step ahead, keen to learn, engage and practice. Those are the characteristics of the Young Talent Award winners. SIPS Middle East Youth Committee invites all procurement and supply chain professionals to join the two young leaders and winners at the recently concluded SIPS MENA Awards, while they share the, secret, the secrets behind their success story. Please welcome Khalid Al Barwani, Procurement and Contracts Professional at the Petroleum Development in Oman, and Moza Al Qaidi, Procurement and Contracts Professional at the Telecommunications and Digital Government Regularity Authority in the UAE. If you have any questions, please post them in the Q&A box and we'll make sure to answer them, to answer them at the end of the webinar. Uh, I will leave now the floor to Moza and Khaled to introduce themselves. And let's start with Khaled. Uh, thank you, Sheikha, for that introduction. Uh, first of all, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending us uh, today. It's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, my name is Khaled Al Barwani. I'm a contract engineer at Petroleum Development Amman. I studied in Cardiff University, studied supply chain management, then moved to PDO as a contract engineer. Uh, and currently, I manage the drilling rigs category uh, under the well engineering uh, contracting and procurement. And uh, I look forward for this session and to discuss my experience with the SIFS awards process. Thank you, Khaled. Uh, Moza? Uh, Moza, I think you're on mute. Apologies. Hi. Um, thank you, Sheikha, for that introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, uh, my name is Moza Al Gaidi. I am an, a senior con a procurement and contract officer at uh, TDRA. I have been working at TDRA for uh, seven years, and I'm managing the consultancy and outsourcing category in procurement. And um, I'm looking forward to, to having this session and hearing your questions in the end and, and you know, benefiting all together. Thank you, Moza. So just to give also an introduction for everyone who's attending today, we will be talking about the journey of applying to a SIPS MENA award, uh, specifically in the young uh, talent category. Uh, so we'll be discussing this through uh, today's webinar. Uh, we'll go through the first uh, question here. Uh, what were the factors that uh, were leaning to participate in this award? Uh, I'll start with Khaled. Yeah, thank you, Sheikha. So the factors into applying for the award, uh, first and foremost, uh, SIPS is the professional qualification for procurement supply in the world. So being part of the award ceremony is an opportunity to prove your standing in the most coveted procurement qualification around. So that's first. 
but it's also an opportunity to earn recognition for excellence. So a lot of work has been done, especially in the last two years. We're talking about the COVID-19 pandemic and the supply chain challenges faced by those in those industry. Uh, this is an opportunity to showcase uh, those achievements and also an opportunity to uh, replicate best practices learnings across other uh, uh, um, uh, countries as well. It's also an opportunity to benchmark your achievements. So you get to see how you are doing and how's your company doing against other achievements in the world. And again, it's part of the knowledge sharing. Uh, another reason is also to celebrate your success. So I think a lot of time we do a lot of work but we don't get the chance to celebrate. And I think to celebrate to, with other industry network peers is a great opportunity. And lastly, it's also an opportunity to network. So being part of this process, going to the award ceremony in Abu Dhabi, it's uh, really interesting because rarely you're in a room with 200 people and you do the exact same job, maybe different categories, different sectors. So everyone speaks the same language as I see. And that's really exciting to network and develop long-term relationships with across, uh, peers across the region. So yeah, that's in summary, that's it. I think it was the best times to apply for this uh, award and to celebrate the award, uh, especially after COVID-19. Uh, what about you, Moza? Tell us what were the factors that uh, was leading you to participate in this award? Um, well, uh, I was uh, actually leaning first of all on the support of my manager and colleagues and their push to, you know, to uh, uh, participate in this award. And, um, you know, looking at the, um, the criteria of the award, I actually saw that, you know, it was a very fitting situation and an opportunity that, uh, you know, shouldn't be ignored. So um, that came along too. And aside from that, my achievements that I'm proud of, I mean, it all came together. And I was, you know, I would say these are the factors that I leaned on in participating for this award. That's great. Uh, Khaled, tell us, how, how would you describe the journey of uh, participating uh, in, the, um, in the award? Was it easy? Was it smooth? Tell us about your journey. So the journey of participating in the award was uh, quite smooth. So SIPS has done a great job in terms of making sure that the process is smooth. Uh, they're quick to respond to any clarifications or support. Uh, so one thing that I advise, so from the beginning, uh, you have the nomination booklet. And the nomination booklet is very, very useful because it explains the different categories. So young talent is one of only, I think, 14, 13 categories in this award ceremony. So it clearly describes and articulates what are the different categories and what are the requirements for different categories? What are the documents that needs to be submitted? So that made it very, very easy and smooth to submit the first part of the process, which is the documentation and the write-up. The second part was the interview. So once you pass the first stage and you get shortlisted for the interview again, the interview was really fun, uh, exciting, interactive. Uh, I do know a couple of the judges seeing them on LinkedIn and then getting to see them in person, getting the interview. And the interview was really left to your discretion. So you get to present what you want to present. And that gives you an ease because you talk about what you know and your achievements. And, uh, it's, and the, you don't feel it's a formal official interview. You feel like it's a discussion between different industry uh, peers and that uh, made it very easy as well. So overall, smooth the journey and the time passes very quickly within that journey. That's amazing. You make it sound really easy and very positive and flexible. Uh, and that's what SIPS is all about. Uh, what about you, Moza? Tell us about your journey. I would first like to agree with you. It was um, actually exactly what you just said. Um, it, it's a very exciting journey, honestly. I mean, yes, you were anxious in the beginning because you know that SIPs will only shortlist the best of the best. So you're very anxious of whether you're gonna make it to that um, shortlist or not. And, uh, but, but I can't say it's not exciting. It is very exciting. You're on your toes, the excitement, the you know anticipation. It was a very, very amazing journey. And especially, you know, getting recognized by a company like SIPS or people all over the world, you know, from different uh, countries and different companies. I mean, it's all um, very worth it. And uh, honestly, it passed by really quickly. Looking back at it now, I feel like I just, I just applied. <laughs> <laughs> Moza, I can see the excitement from your eyes and you're now motivating me to apply for it next year. You should. Uh, Yes, but were there any challenges? 
Yeah. Uh, oh, go ahead, Khaled. Sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, I was just going to say that the uh, challenges that were uh, faced, perhaps, um, you know, um, it's all about, uh, you know, ex actually uh, showcasing your achievements that you've made in your field. And, you know, sometimes it's very hard to refine all these achievements into a very, because the request was um, a, sh a short 500 words paragraph to uh, talk about all your achievements. So maybe that's the only challenge that I've honestly faced and it wasn't that big of a challenge, but you know, refining everything into fitting it in that paragraph, perhaps I would say that. But honestly and truly, aside from that, it was a very, very smooth sailing process. It was very uh, straightforward and enjoyable actually. The, the interview that we did, I, I enjoyed it tremendously, honestly. So it wasn't no big uh, challenges there? No, 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 I wouldn't say that they were. What, what about you, Khaled? Were there any challenges and how did you overcome them? So yeah, just to echo Moses' point. So when you go through the submission process, you're only limited to 500 words. And there's a tendency to list down everything you have done, and especially in the last two years when we're talking about COVID-19. Uh, there's a lot of challenges faced in terms of supply chain continuity, uh, low oil price environment and procurement has been at the forefront of really delivering against all of those challenges. So again, listing all your achievements and consolidating it in a limited uh, time frame is difficult. But what I do suggest is that uh, instead of writing everything you have done, think about what would make you different. So for example, the typical, okay, negotiating 10%, probably a lot of people have done that. But think about an achievement that is innovative. So it's, have you led something that is a new technology, something that's new and not just in your company, but in your industry. And that would require a lot of what I call market intelligence of knowing what are the events that are happening and the technologies that are happening. So my first advice is think about something that is innovative that would make you stand out in front of a large pool of competition. Uh, my second advice is think about a problem that is happening in your organization. Has there been a persistent problem over the last two or three years? And how did you be at the forefront of solving it? Because then that again demonstrates problem solving skills and it's not always easy to solve those problems. So if you are going to form a submission, think about those two elements. And I do believe that your chances will be uh, much bigger of uh, winning. And that's how, the best way to overcome that uh, challenge of making sure that I do get the right content and that limited uh, write-up. That's, that's really great advices out there, uh, Khaled. And I would recommend actually the audience to take notes. Uh, think about problem solving, think about innovation while submitting for this award. Um, Moza, uh, what were the lessons learned from this experience? Well, um, there were multiple numerous lessons learned. Um, first, I would like to say, um, you need to believe in yourself. You have to have faith in yourself and um, just go ahead and do it. I mean, yes, you might think that, you know, again, like I said before, SIPS is only choosing the best of the, uh, of the best. And sometimes, you know, you doubt yourself. But I would say uh, believe in yourself and, and uh, go ahead. Uh, I've, uh, you know, I've learned that doing that actually makes your confidence in yourself grows 10 times more. And uh, aside from that, I would say that uh, networking is key. It's absolutely very important. And, um, you know, you get to be, uh, uh, you know, you get to be recognized by so many people, like I mentioned before, and uh, it can take you so, to so many places. Um, I've learned that you, you can never, ever stop learning, no matter how, how, no matter what you got or what is the stage that, you're, that you've reached, you never stop learning. And especially in a field like procurement, where I would say it's, there are worlds um, uh, to know. And um, yeah, and uh, I've learned that hard work pays off and I'm very proud. Thank you, Moza, and really great advices also for all the young uh, procurement professionals to go out there and be confident, try it out, uh, go through the experience. You Absolutely. will never lose. It's a win-win situation. Uh, if you didn't win, you will gain something out of this experience. Uh, what about you, Khaled? What were the lessons learned from this experience? Yeah, so thanks, Yusa. I think also Moza covered it, but uh, I think that 
a lot of people when they see awards, okay, the idea of them trying to participate gets exciting, but then once they go and know that, oh, I have to write a write-up, I have to submit forms, and they kind of get demotivated by that. But I do suggest people to look beyond that. Uh, do spend time in uh, developing a quality submission. I think some people, even if they do it, they might rush it or not pay attention. So spend time, uh, again, to my previous answer, think about your uh, best achievements, uh, spend time on it, uh, make sure you can get it reviewed by a mentor or someone who has been in the process. And I think that will really help you because they can give you special direction in terms of what makes a winning submission. And again, believe in yourself. So a lot of great work has been done by our field, which is contracting and procurement across the board, especially in COVID. But I don't feel that they have been showcased enough. And I think that's not doing justice, not just to the individual himself in terms of uh, celebrating their achievements and being recognized, but also to the remaining of the community, because I feel that if we do exchange those best practices, those learnings, I think as a um, field, we come stronger as well. So uh, I do believe learning uh, lessons is important. And lastly, the award, apart from just winning, I think think about the networking and the long-term relationships you built from this experience. So starting from the initial nominations and working with the SIPS people uh, up to the interview, getting to know the judges uh, personally, uh, going to the ceremony in Abu Dhabi and getting to meet 200 people in the same room who speak the same language and all from the contracting and procurement is definitely an exciting an opportunity that probably you would not get uh, anywhere else. So my main advice, go for it. Uh, and um, you never know, you might be losing out on a big opportunity if you don't go for it. Definitely. That was such an amazing opportunity. And we really advise all the people to go for it and try this opportunity. Uh, now, the last question is, what's next? People want to know what's next for Moza and Khaled. Moza, if you can tell us what's next for you. Well, um, of course, you know, uh, the Young Talent uh, Award is, is a milestone in the road. And, um, you know, I'm not planning to stop here, obviously. I'm a very, uh, I like to take uh, advantage of all opportunities that I get my way. I'm actually currently in the very last stages of uh, getting my MSEPS uh, uh, certification. Um, I only have the oral presentation left and, um, you know, pray for me. <laughs> and, Congratulations. Uh, Thank you. At the same time, I'm um, I'm uh, planning to you know activate the because um, Sheikha. I would like to highlight that Sheikha and I are the co-chairs of the SIPS Youth uh, Committee, and we're planning to have so many um, webinars coming out soon, which will discuss topics that are the choice of the youth themselves with, with regards to the procurement field. We want to interact more, we want to network more, you know, we want to um, share our experience and learn from others as well who are in, at this, in the same field that we are in. I'm also um, working on getting my uh, DBA, with, I'm, I'm a PhD student, so juggling all of that together and um, yeah take uh, take advantage of every single opportunity that you have it is never ever too late and it's never ever too early to do something you know when it happens it happens but you just need to keep focused and and just you know dive in that's what i would uh, advise everyone here thank you definitely i mean uh, if i would add to your uh, uh point uh, moza uh, it's an amazing way, the webinars to, you know, the, this platform to share our experiences, to network, to even benchmark with others and see what our uh, colleagues and the professional, what are they doing? What are the latest technologies? What is the latest innovation? Uh, all about sustainability. How can we improve and develop our processes? So, uh, we, we are actually looking forward to having more webinars in the future to discuss some important uh, uh, elements in procurement. Um, moving to Khaled, uh, what's next for you? Okay, uh, so this question comes perfectly after the last question in terms of the lessons learned. So I'm very excited to announce that because of this whole process and uh, the winning, uh, I got the chance to be part of the SIPS, uh, the first SIPS Aman branch committee. So that's a very exciting role, and I will be the social media and marketing uh, officer for that. 
this is an exciting opportunity to develop the contracting and procurement division in Oman, but also network in terms of with the region in terms of other um, industry peers. So that's an exciting opportunity from that. The second part of it is uh, in terms of our company itself. So we are going through a complete strategy refresh and the strategy is focusing on health and safety, uh, green challenges, how do we make sure that the company, the oil and gas becomes net zero by 2050. And contracting and procurement will once again be playing in a, a front, forefront role in terms of uh, tackling those health and safety challenges, the carbon challenges. So that's going to be an exciting opportunity to be part of that and really drive change within the new corporate direction of our company. I'm also in the middle of completing the SIPS qualification itself and looking to be part of the MSIPS and FSIPS uh, certified as well. Congratulations, uh, Khaled, and we wish you all the, the best. And I, I believe this was actually, um, you know, an open door after uh, having this opportunity uh, of participating in this award. Uh, so Definitely. that's great. Uh, thank you both for sharing your uh, successful uh, stories in, in this journey. And uh, we would like to open the floor for the audience if they have any questions uh, to ask uh, Khalid uh, or Moza, please feel free to post your questions in the Q&A box and we will answer them right away. Okay, so we have a question here. Uh, Moza Khaled, whoever wants to answer the question can, uh, can go ahead and, and answer. Uh, what keeps you motivated? Actually, I want you both to answer these questions. What keeps you motivated? You can be motivated at some point, but can you be motivated all the time? What, what is the push that makes you always motivated? Well, um, if I may start, I would say that, uh, you know, it's, um, it's different from one person to another. And uh, I think for me personally, I have this need for achievement, perhaps. And, um, you know, it's it, it always, um, I, uh, I'm, I'm that kind of person who I don't like to sit doing nothing. Uh, so um, you'll see me doing a little bit of everything from here and there, whether it was in my, um, you know, uh, academic, uh, from an academic perspective or from a pro professional setting. So um, I like to spend my time doing things that are useful. I like to build my portfolio and build my CV moving forward. And, um, you know, uh, at the end of the day, it's very important for me to be proud of myself as well of, and, and of my achievement. And I think this is what keeps me going, you know, that uh, I want to, I want to, you know, reach the self-actualization stage if, we, if we'll uh, refer back to master's hierarchy. And um, yeah, this is the main reason of my motivation. I would like, I want to be completely and 100% proud of myself and, you know, keep exploring and keep learning and never stop because we're here on this earth for a purpose. And uh, yeah, I think this pretty much sums it up. That's a really good answer, uh, Moza. What about you, Khaled? What motivates you? Uh, thank you, Moza and Sheikha. So what motivates me is being really the best version of yourself and continuous improvement. So today, if you have an achievement, what motivates me is tomorrow is how can I up that achievement? How can I go uh, further? So for example, this SIPS uh, is, for example, one motivator in terms of being recognized by the professional qualification and contracting and the procurement. So being the best version of yourself, continuous improvement, but uh, most importantly is what motivates me is, am I making a change? So am I making a change to the team I am? What would the team look like without me? So that motivates me is how can I make my footing within that team? And above that is in terms of the company as well. So are you making a difference to the company? Are you supporting the company in terms of uh, their objectives, the country objectives, not just the commercial objectives, but we're also in a company where it helps the country objectives. So um, am I, for example, improving employment? Are people getting employed because of me? And these are decisions that we make in our day-to-day -day basis. And that keeps me motivated that when I do get up at the work at 8 a.m., that someone's, someone else's life has changed because of the decisions I make as a contracting and procurement field. And that keeps me motivated that I have a 
role and responsibility, and not just a commercial one, but an ethical and from a social perspective as well. Definitely. And I think sense of achievement uh, is the most important element to, to motivate you. Uh, we have also one more question. It's actually a really good question. Um, how is SIPS preserved, uh, perceived by your colleagues? Does it help position procurement as strategic function rather than a back office function? What do you think, uh, Moza? 100%. I think um, I've always said that procurement is a very, very underestimated field. And, you know, it, it's, uh, um, you know, there is, unfortunately, you know, in universities, when you study, there is not, not much uh, light uh, shining on the procurement aspect of it. They will just mention it when they're talking about other um, uh, functions in an organization. But I think it's very, very underestimated. You know, thinking that a procurement uh, official is just a person who purchases things and pays for them is, is an absolutely um, false notion. This is perhaps 10% of what uh, procurement actually is. So, um, you know, having companies like, uh, like um, organizations like SIPs who are all about, you know, um, um, teaching people and letting them know what procurement actually is and uh, and, and that it's not just something that is very um, superficial or basic. It's, it's very deep, actually, and has, I mean, I've been learning since day one. Honestly, um, I've been learning since day one. And every, um, every uh, you know, task or something that I work on, I, I, I learn something new. It's never the same in procurement. It's very fun. So, yes, it, it's actually, you know, the, the perception of the, of the colleagues have changed, especially from other departments and in, in my place of work. And uh, it is under, procurement is understood uh, more um, after myself and my teammates and uh, my manager were all getting the SIPS uh, certification, which we're very proud of. And, uh, you know, uh, conducting the awareness sessions that would explain what procurement actually is and, and it's definitely different. It's definitely 100% different. Yeah, actually, SIPs have changed a lot in our organization. I agree 100% with Moza. Uh, Khaled, we have a question for you. Uh, it's actually a very interesting question. Uh, did you find it challenging to share information on your achievements in your submission? And later in the interviews, in which way can be somehow sensitive uh, for your company? and from whom to get the steer within company for support? Okay, uh, very good question. Um, so first and foremost, SIPS has a confidentiality agreement. So whatever you submit uh, will be confidential to the judges and to the panel as well. Uh, second of all, think about ways, you don't have to reveal very sensitive numbers. I think that if you articulate and craft your submission, avoiding numbers, it may be used percentages, uh, don't reveal, for example, the supplier name. So I think that there are many ways in terms of to showcase your achievements uh, without going to confidentiality. If in doubt, uh, for the submission requirements, you are required to get your uh, CFO or MD uh, approval of that uh, form which and support. So if in doubt, uh, talk with your senior management. Uh, I'm sure they will understand if this information can be shared, how can we uh, for example, de-risk in terms of the sensitivity information. Uh, so those are my main advice, but don't worry about sensitivity. There are many ways around it. And uh, yeah. Great. Thank you, Khaled. Um, I think we don't have any other questions, so we will end this webinar. Uh, it has come to an end now, and I would like to thank Moza and Khaled for sharing their success stories. And for all the audience who have uh, attended with us today. Thank you for your time. And we have that this webinar had given you some push and motivation that you need to apply for next year's award. Uh, thank you all and have a good day and see you in future webinars. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sheikha.